Hi, this is Anne with a quick anagram on um, working with layout. And although I'm doing this in the context of our um, exercise on floating elements, I think the approach that I am um, describing and, um, and showing you how to kind of work with is useful for, um, actually even more useful for the two weeks where we work with flex and grid. I think everything I'm gonna say here is actually probably described better in the book, but I find the book examples to be a little bit busy and um, these certainly aren't in the context of the exercise that I've given you. So I'm hoping that uh, paring this down to its sort of essential elements and going through it kind of slowly in terms of float and um, a couple of things that the Replit IDE can do for you um, may be useful. So let's get started. Um, I have here a pared down version of the Astromech page. Um, you can't really tell that from the file list because I didn't bother deleting a lot of stuff over there. But um, basically what I've done is I've taken away everything but the body and um, the very first droid element. So um, I've styled it just enough. So the body is 600 pixels wide and it's centered on the page. And then I have tried hard to put borders around elements that are containers and put background elements on background colors on elements that are not containers and only items. Because I think one of the key things for all this layout is making sure you're understanding what's the con what things are containers and many containers are inside other containers and specifically which container or which item you're trying to change the, the location of. So um, that's all small enough that I think we're just going to watch it here in the preview pane. And I have punted a little on the thumbnail images here. Um, I'm not going to be working with them. So, so they aren't quite as um, laid out. There probably should be a box around the UL here. And I didn't bother with that. So um, specifically, I have added some styling. So every container from the body to each of these divs has been given a different border, okay? And the photo image, um, the H2 element and the paragraph have been given background colors. Okay, so um, let's just start. What you're supposed to do this week is float this image left for this particular droid and so that the text here wraps around it. It's already left because that's the natural flow within this element. But what we want to do is, is we want to apply a float styling to it. And I have to say that the most natural thing and the thing I see people do all the time is simply go to this image and ask it to float left. Okay. And then if you run it, that sort of almost works, except, um, except some strange things happen. The container it's in collapses, but still has its padding and its margin. So you can see this red dots here that used to contain this image, they've collapsed down to being practically flat. And this image is hanging down out of that container into this container, which is kind of sort of wrapping around it. Um, certainly the text is not underneath the image, but there's no margins and borders and it looks kind of ugly. So the, the thing to think about is that this image is contained inside a container. Uh, specifically, this image here is inside a div of class photo. And really, if you think about it, um, and you know to think about it this way, what you really want to do is get the div that the image is in floated left. So let's go back and do that. And if we go down here, it is the div of class photo. So instead of floating the image left, 
Let's float that div left. And I think that's a much more um, satisfactory float. So basically this whole little red dotted box now intrudes into um, the elements that are flowing with, flowing with it inside the description. So if we get, go back up here, this droid class is the blue dotted line. And now this guy is floating left and all of this guy, the description, is, um, is wrapping around him. So um, as you go through this week and next, you're going to continually need to be thinking about what's the item that you want to change the location of and what's its container. And so I think I've shown this before, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, one of the things that, that Replit can do for you is fold all. Okay, and, um, and that by itself isn't very useful, but if you start opening this up, okay, you can see um, we're not, head is not something that's involved in, in, in various kinds of layout. So basically what you're gonna be doing is this week and the next two weeks, you're gonna be consistently styling things that are inside the body. Sometimes you'll apply styling to the body. Um, it's a container. It's got the gray dashed line here, okay? Um, sometimes you're gonna be styling, um, applying layout to things in it. So, so for example, this div class droid, okay, lives within the body. I could probably have put a style on section, but since everything was inside section, I guess I, I punted on that. Um, but as we open up using these little arrow, these little plus signs, what we can see is what's contained in, in what. So inside div droid, okay, we have a div for the photo that contains an image. We have a div for the description that contains an H2, a paragraph, and another div that has the thumbnails. And I think if you, um, if you really focus in on when you're trying to move things around, what things are contained. And so when are you trying to move things within Droid? So it may become your flex or, di or grid container. And then this thing may be either the item. Um, I don't think generally we're gonna be, I think we're generally gonna be moving this div around as opposed to the image, but I can't promise that. So, but since the only thing in that, inside that div is the image, I think what you'll generally be doing is applying layout to the div. And what I see people consistently doing is trying to apply layout to the image where within that, within that div, there really isn't much for that image to do. It's the only thing in there. And layout really helps when you have multiple items that you're trying to change the relationship of. So again, I think the book goes into much greater detail, is more precise about terminology, but I think this little experiment, um, I'll go ahead and put the, um, the link to this in the slides, both the um, video that I'm making and this little HTML, and it may be useful for you to play with this as you're, as you're working through the next few weeks. So I hope that helps a little.